Good evening, everybody. And I have to make sure I don't pull my candles down like I did once before. Let me just turn you ever so slightly this way. That makes it a little bit easier for me. Excellent. Good evening, everybody. My name is Joanna Godwin Seidel, and I am your host again this evening for 1001 Nights Reading. So, man, we'll be back next week. Um, I believe next week, it's on Saturday already, we will be having a very, very special celebratory reading. Um, Saman, Kamyab and I, and hopefully Bijan as well, are going to finally be reunited at last. Yes, it's been a long time since February, we realised that. Um, and we are actually going to be celebrating our one year anniversary on um, the 22nd of May at the very, very beautiful Palais Hansen Kempinski. Watch out for news on that. We will be putting up um, an event on Facebook. I actually put it up already, but I haven't sent it out yet. And um, more information about that reading as we go along over the next couple of weeks. So we look very much forward to all reading together on that evening, Saman and I together in one room, in a very beautiful room, actually, in a very, very beautiful hotel. If you don't know it, the Palais Hansen Kempinski, if you are in Vienna, try to make sure you can book this very, very beautiful hotel. It's on the Vienna's very beautiful ring. Um, so a prime location and um, it is stunning inside. It's a very beautiful spa as well. Lovely staff, very friendly. We can attest to that. We've been there a few number of times now already. Um, so I actually did a trailer there once previously for, for a fashion designer friend of mine, Marcos Valenzuela Abril for Tiberius. And we did a trailer there um, for some fashion wear together. And that's how I first really started going to the Kempinski. It's a very, very beautiful spa area and a very beautiful hotel. So that's where we will be on the 22nd of May for a very special reading with live music from Kamyab Sadiri. So without further ado, we were of the story with a man's dispute with the learned women. And if you remember rightly, um, they were discussing who, whether a man or a woman was better. So they were having a big discussion about gender politics, which is very exciting. I thought, and I'm just gonna, sorry, I know I'm a bit fidgety again today, um, but there you go. So hopefully, yes, I think we're all set now. Um, so yes, we're having a big discussion on gender politics. And at the moment, 
at the moment, the way the story is going, um, it's definitely in favour of the male of the species. But let's see how this whole story pans out, shall we? In the now, when it was the 421st night, Shahrazad said, It has reached me, O auspicious king, that Shaikh continued, So, if any one enlarge in praise of a slave girl and wish to enhance her value by the mention of her beauties, he likeneth her to a youth because of the illustrious qualities that belong to the male, as even saith the poet. Boy like of backside in the deed of kind, she sways as sways the wand like boughs of a wind. And use then, were not better and fairer than girls, why should these be likened to them? And know also, almighty Allah preserve thee, that a youth is easy to be led, adapting himself to every reed, pleasant of converse and manners, inclining to ascent rather than descent, especially when his side face is newly downed and his upper lip is first in brown, and the purple lights of youth on his cheeks abound, so that he is like the, the full moon sound. And how goodly is the saying of Abu Tamamam, the slanderer said, there's hair upon his cheeks. Quoth I, exceed not, there's no blemish there. When he could hear that hailing of his hips, and pearl beads shaded by mustachio hair, and rose swore solemn holiest oath that is, from that fair cheek she never more would fare. I spoke with eyelids without need of speech, and they had answered me his eyebrows were. He's even fairer than thou knewest him, and cheek down guards from all would over dare. Brighter and sweeter now are grown his charms, since down robe's lip and cheek before were bare. And those who blame me for my love of him, when him they mention, say of him, thy fair. And quoth Al-Harari, and quoth exceedingly and excellently well, my senses say, what means this pine for him? Seest not the flowing hair on cheeks are flowing? I say, by Allah, and ye deem I dote. Look at the truth in those fine eyes are showing. But for the down that veils his cheeks and chin, his brow had dazed all eyes, no sighs allowing. And whoso sojourns in a growthless land, how shall he move from land where growths are growing? And quoth another, My blamers say of me, he is consoled and lie. No consolation comes to those who pine and sigh. I had no solace when rose bloomed alone on cheek. Now basil blooms thereon, and now consoled am I. And again, slim-waisted one, who looks with down of cheek, in slaughtering mankind each other hurtle. With a narcissus blade he sheddeth blood, the baldric of whose sheath in freshest myrtle. And again, not with his must I'm drunk, but verily, those curls turn manly heads like newest wine. Each of his beauties envies each and all, would be the silky down on side face line. Such are the excellencies of youth, which women do not own, and they more than suffice to give those that preference over these. She replied, Allah give thee health, verily. 
thou hast imposed the debate upon thyself, and thou hast spoken, and hast not stinted, and hast brought proofs to support every assertion. But now, here is the truth manif become manifest, so swerve thou not from the path thereof, and if thou do not be content with a summary of evidence, I will set it before thee in fullest detail. Allah upon thee, where is the youth beside the girl, and who shall compare kid and wild cow? The girl is soft of speech, fair of form, like a branchlet of basil, with teeth like a chamomile petals, and hair like halters, wherefrom two hang hearts. Her cheeks are like blood red and enemies, and her face like a pippin. She hath lips like wine, and breasts like pomegranates twain, and a shape supple as a rattan cane. Her body, her body is well formed, with sloping shoulders dight. She hath a nose like the edge of a sword, shining bright, and a forehead brilliant white, and eyebrows which unite, and eyes stained by nature's hand, black as night. If she speaks, fresh, young pearls are scattered from her mouth forthright, and all hearts are ravished, by the daintiness of her sprite. And when she smileth, thou wouldst wean the moon shone out her lips between, and when she eyes thee, sword blades flash from the babes of her eyes. In her, all beauties to conclusion come, and she is the centre of attraction to traveller and stay at home. She hath two lips of cramoisie, than cream smoother and of taste than honey sweeter. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of day and ceased to say her permitted say. Now, when it was the four hundred and Twenty second night. She said, It has reached me, O auspicious king, that the preacher woman thus pursued her theme in the praise of fair maids. She hath two lips of cramoisie, then cream smoother, and then honey sweeter, adding, And she hath a bosom as it were a way, two hills between which are a pair of breasts like globes of ivory sheen. Likewise, a stomach right smooth, flanks soft as the palm spathe, and creased with folds and dimples which overlap one another, and liberal thighs which like columns of pearl arise, and back parts which billow and beat together like seas of glass or mountains of glance, and two feet and hands of gracious mould, like unto ingots of virgin gold. So, O oh miserable, where are mortal men beside the jinn? Knowest thou not that pursuant princes and potent kings before women ever humbly bend, and on them for delight depend? Verily, they may say we rule over necks and rob hearts, these women. How many a rich man have they not pauperd? How many a powerful man have they not prostrated? And how many a superior man have they not enslaved? Indeed, they seduce the sage and send the saint to shame and bring the wealthy to want and plunge the fortune favoured into penury. Yet, for all this, the wise but redouble in affection of them and honour, 
nor do they count this oppression or dishonour. How many a man for them hath offended his maker and called down on himself the wrath of his father and mother, and all this because of the conquest of their love over hearts. Knowest thou not, O wretched one, that for them are built pavilions and slave girls are for sale, that for them tear floods rail and for them are collected jewels of price and ambergris and musk odoriferous and armies are arrayed and pleasance is made and wealth heaped up and smitten off is many a head and indeed he spoke sooth in the words who so saith the world meaneth woman now as for thy citation from the holy traditions. It is an argument against thee and not for thee, in that the prophet, whom Allah bless and preserve, compares the beardless with the black-eyed girls of paradise. Now, doubtless, the subject of comparison is worthier than the object therewithin compared. So, unless women be the worthier and the goodlier, wherefore, should other than they be likened to them. And as for thy saying that girls are likened to boys, the case is not so, but the contrary. Boys are likened to girls. For folks say, yonder boy is like a girl. As for what proof thou quotest from the poets, the verses were the product of a complexion unnatural in this respect. And as for the habitual of sodomites and catamites, offenders against religion, Almighty Allah hath condemned them in his holy book, wherein he denounceth their filthy practices, saying, Do ye approach unto the males among mankind and leave your wives which your Lord hath created for you? Surely ye are a people who transgress. These it is that liken girls to boys of their exceeding profligacy and ungraciousness and inclination to follow the fiend and own lusts, so that they say she is apt for two tricks, and these are all wanderers from the way of right and the righteous. Quoth their chief, Abu Nawas, slim waist and boyish wit's delight, wencher as well as sodomite. As for what thou sayest of a youth's first hair on cheek and lips, and how they add to his beauty and loveliness, by Allah, Thou strayest from the straight path of sooth, and sayest that which is other than the truth. For whiskers change the charms of the comely into ugliness, quoting these couplets, that sprouting hair upon his face took reek, for lover's vengeance all did vainly seek. I see not in his face a sign fully genus, except his curls are hue of reek. If so, his paper mostly be begrimed, where deemest thou the reed shall draw a streak? If any raise him other fares above, this only proves the judge of wits is weak. And when she ended her verse, she resumed, Lord, be to Allah Almighty and to Harazad perceived the dawn of day and ceased saying, have permitted say. Now, when it was the 423rd night, she said, 
It has reached me, O auspicious king, that when the preacher woman ended her verse, she resumed, she resumed addressing the man. Lord Twala Almighty, how can it be hid from thee that the perfect pleasure is in women and that abiding blessings are not to be found but with them, seeing that Allah, extolled and exalted be he, hath promised his prophets and saints black-eyed damsels in paradise and have appointed these for a recompense of their godly works. And had the Almighty known for that the joy supreme was in the possession of other than women, he had rewarded them therewith and promised it to them. And quoth he, whom Allah bless and preserve, the things I hold dearest of the things of your world are three, women and perfume, and the solace of my eyes in prayer. Verily, Allah hath appointed boys to serve his prophets and saints in paradise, because paradise is the abode of joy and delight, which could not be complete without the service of youths. But as to the use of them for aught but service, it is hell's putridity and corruption and turpitude how well saith the poet. Men's turning unto bums of boys is bumptious. <laughs> Whoso love noble women show their own noblesse. How many godly whites have slept the night enjoying buttocks of boys and woke at morn in foulest mess. Their garments stained by safflow which is yellow murd. Their shame proclaiming showing colour of distress. Who can deny the charge when so berayed are they that even by daylight shows the dung upon their dress? Who can deny, oh, what contrast we the men who slept a gladsome night by hurry made for glance and mere enchanterous? He rises off her, borrowing wholesome bonny scent that fills the house with whiffs of perfume goodliness. No boy deserved place by side of her to hold. Canst even aloes wood with what fills pool and cess. Then said she, O oh folk, ye have made me to break the bounds of modesty and the circle of free-born women, and indulge in idle talking of chambering and wantonness, which beseemeth not people of learning. But the breasts of free-borns are the sepulchres of secrets, and such conversations are in confidence. Moreover, actions are according to intentions, and I crave pardon of Allah for myself and you and all Muslims, seeing that he is the pardoner and the compassionate. Then she held her peace, and thereafter would answer us of naught. So we went our way, rejoicing in that we had profited by her contention, and yet sorrowing to part from her. And among the tales they tell is one of Abu Suwaid and the pretty old woman. Quoth Abu Suwaid, I and a company of friends entered a garden one day to buy somewhat of fruit. We saw in a corner an old woman who was bright of face, but her head hair was white and she was combing it with every comb. We stopped before her, yet she paid no heed to us, neither veiled her face. So I said to her, Oh, old woman, wert thou to dye thy hair black, thou wouldst be handsomer than a girl. What hindereth thee from this? 
she raised her hand towards me. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of day and ceased saying her permitted say. So I am going to finish for this evening. Thank you very much for listening in. This is another week due to work commitments and Saman unfortunately not being available. Oh, there we go. Tag them back. How beautiful. Down a little bit. Um, this is another week uh, due to work commitments and Saman also not being available where we will only have two readings. So that is this Tuesday and either Thursday or Friday this week. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say, ladies and gents. As usual, it was an absolute blessing reading for you. Please make sure you look after yourselves and don't forget, write in the date, the 22nd of May. That's not this coming Saturday, but the Saturday after. And we will be doing a very special celebratory reading in the very beautiful Pally Hansen Kempinski, where Saman and I will be finally reunited live and online with the very beautiful music that you are listening to right now of Kamyab Sadiri, who will be playing this time, not the tar, but I believe the piano for us, which will be a real treat. So thank you very much for listening in. Um, if you join us later, if you've joined us now, it was absolutely wonderful. And don't forget, feel free to share this with your family and friends. And we do have a group. If you're on the event, we do actually have a group as well, specifically for 1001 Nights, and you can find updates and stuff on there and on the Vienna Theatre Project page. And if you like listening to us, we've been reading this book now for over a year, live um, Tuesday to Fridays, I think it is, at 9 p.m., almost religiously every week. We've got a few breaks over Christmas and things like that, and at the moment, we kind of came down a little bit because we've been a bit busy. Um, but we have been reading for over a year. If you enjoy it, you're more than welcome to go on Facebook and find all our other old videos or go on YouTube where you can share those videos with your friends and family and enemies as well if you want to. Um, you can support us, www.paypal.me slash Vienna Theatre Project. We accept one euro. We accept 10 euros. We accept 100 euros, 1,000 euros, a million euros. 10 million euros would be an absolute treat. Thank you very much, everybody. Good night, and I will see you Thursday or Friday this week. Okay, bye-bye. Take care. Look after yourselves and have a great week. Bye-bye.